left wanting. Like, right. yeah, it wasn't good baseball um, that we were watching, but those guys could have made it. Yeah, you you always want to keep that postseason streak going, that hope going, and there's always the argument that even with an offense as bad of this, with those players that were previously traded, that, hey, maybe you find magic for a couple weeks and, and make a run forward in the playoffs. Um, you are locked on Rays. Your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into Locked On Rays, your daily podcast covering everything Tampa Bay Rays from game analysis to player interviews. We've got you covered with all the latest news and insights. My name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sombrano. Bringing you expert analysis and passionate discussions about our beloved Rays. Whether you're a diehard fan who vividly remembers Longo's Game 162 just like us. Or you remember the early Devil Ray days of Wade Boggs and Carl Crawford. We are here to break down every play, every trade, and every milestone. In fact, this is our sixth season covering the Rays daily. In every season up till 2024 that we've been covering the team, they've gone to the playoffs. However, baseball is still going on, so that gives you a tidy excuse to still grab your favorite Rays gear, settle in, subscribe to our Locked on Rays YouTube channel and other podcast platforms. You can also find us on X and Instagram at Locked on Rays. This episode is brought to you by Booking.com. Booking. Yeah, the right state can make you a fan of any city, even your baseball rivals. Book today on Booking.com, the official accommodation partner of Major League Baseball. Get the Booking.com app today. All right, uh, Ulysses, you are in another country, parts unknown, scouting some potential raised prospects, doing Neander's job for him, evidently. So somebody's got to do it. Hey, your guy, Stu, told you to tell me to do Mm -hmm. this. Now, I don't know why he bypassed Eric Neander. I don't know. We don't know. We're going to get that information soon. Actually, Kevin, I'm actually getting breaking news here. We have Eric Neander on the show right now. What's Is that true? We do. We have a recorded audio clip of Eric Neander, which we'll get to in a moment. Yeah, you're like a hired hand for Stu Sternberg in the Rays. You're, I, I guess, a, a baseball mercenary. If we, you know, the, the, the military has Blackwater, whatever they're called now. I know they've changed names like three times. So that's basically what you are in trying to uh, divvy up some prospects uh, in Latin America. So we'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned Eric Neander. Uh, yes, he had a 35 minute press conference on Friday. Uh, there's a lot of takeaways, a lot of interesting stuff that is to be gleaned from that. We also have a general audio clip that we'll get to. One thing I noticed, I always thought that Neander was accompanied by one or two at these year-end post-mortem situations like a Peter Bendix who is now with the Marlins and cutting staff like crazy. Evidently, he's gotten rid of like 70 personnel folks uh, in the Miami organization, but at least Kevin Cash. Maybe Kevin Cash was like, hey, hurricane stuff, unsettling. I'm getting out of Dodge and taking care of that. Neander, you got to run the show on your own and field questions from Topkin and Klosky and Trisha Whitaker and all those other cats. it it looked odd though to just have yeah. Eric Neander there uh, in that picture. That top. You have any backup? Uh, you know, you, you, you no you, backup. No, you you don't have anybody to feed the ball, feed the question to. Like it was just kind of, um, yeah. I think the word is odd. And also back into your Bendix stuff of him firing everybody, dude. You're not kidding. Even the travel secretary got the got the boot. Like my God, even George Costanza is out of a job. <laughs> the uh... crazy. The assistant to the traveling secretary or whatever it is. Yeah, Yeah, and uh, notable about that is I believe there is, I guess we can call it a two-year moratorium on Bendix plucking away any staff from the Rays. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I guess, you know, the Rays fans shouldn't have to worry about that too much. But Bendix definitely wants to get his show on the road and get his people that he feels can get the job going right going forward but this isn't a marlins podcast this is a Rays podcast and eric neander we have a clip of him let's go ahead and hear a little bit of what uh, what he had to say 
um, you know, we, we had some injuries, you know, out of the gates. We were limited with our left-handed hitters or some things early that – no excuses. You have obstacles that are different every year, and you've – by often – you know, for the most part, we've overcome them the last many years. This year we didn't. Um, but, you know, this series in April going on the road to Chicago, Milwaukee, there were, there were signs early that, man, we gotta we got to turn this thing. And we just – we could never – reach that point um so it's given us a lot of time to think and and reflect I, I think decisions that were made in july were jump-starting a lot of the business that we were going to have to confront one way or another this off season um it made things cha- more challenging for us the rest of this year you know and played a part in where we ended up um but something that we increases our confidence as we go forward with respect to our competitiveness so um again as i alluded to in the opening uh i think we're we look we're disappointed we won 80 games we're not at 60 games and a world away right there's teams playing right now still that are at 86 and that's not our goal but the pitching's intact um we have we're bringing everyone back healthy McClanahan back healthy I think the bones of a very very competitive team are there but we got to find a way to cash in opportunities with runners on second and third um and That'll come from, I think, a lot of the group we have, but we got to find ways to, if we're talking about getting back to where we've been the five years prior, we're going to need to find a way to score more runs, and that'll be a lot of our focus this offseason. But I don't think we're terribly far off by any means, and when you have the best farm system in baseball, in our opinion, the history of having that at any given moment and the competitiveness that follows, there's a pretty strong correlation there as well. So out of that two-minute or so clip, uh, Ulysses, Anything you'd, you'd like to glean from that? I'm glad he talked about that 2020 hindsight that you have after you make the trades. Mm-hmm. They were really close, even with this, you know, basically a massive fire sale they had. Right. They were still very close to to getting into the playoffs. So I think it's good that he recognizes that, yeah, the the trades that were made are good for the future. Having said that, if they hadn't been made, there is an argument to be made that that this that that team would have squeaked into the playoffs, and I think that's basically what a lot of the fan base, um, not a lot of the fans, but, but a, a portion of fa- of the fan base is is feeling like left wanting. Like, right. yeah, it wasn't good baseball um, that we were watching, but those guys could have made it. Yeah, you you always want to keep that postseason streak going, that hope going, and there's always the argument that even with an offense as bad as this, with those players that were previously traded, that hey, maybe you find magic for a couple weeks and and make a run forward in the playoffs. Um, but alternatively, uh, the line of thinking is yes, you've beefed up the farm system and. You hopefully have some payroll flexibility for this offseason and next and beyond after that. Uh, We do have a lot more, not necessarily audio clips, but just some bullet points on what Neander had to say from his press conference on Friday. But before we do that, we have to tell the audience a couple very important things. One of those is Arena Club. Uh, For most of us that like collecting cards, the idea of spending two grand or more on a Luca, Ellie, or Mahomes rookie card or a Cam and Arrow card just isn't in the cards. You may love collecting, but there's some serious money to drop. But thanks to Slab Packs from ArenaClub.com, now it's possible to score gym mints for a fraction of their retail price. Uh, Arena Club Slab Packs are revolutionizing the repack game with transparency. After your pools are revealed, they'll immediately be placed in your showroom for safekeeping, selling, trading, or auction. The Arena Club grading process also is accurate, fast, and transparent with a full-grade rationale. Right now, you can get 10% off your first slab pack or card purchase by going to arenaclub.com slash LockedOnMLB and use code LockedOnMLB. So good, I'll repeat it again. That's Arena Club dot com slash l o c k e d o n m l b code locked on m o b for ten percent off your first purchase. In the last twenty four hours, I've had three flights, and I love travel. You know I do. You know I love it, but it takes a beating on the body. And mm. even if you're not taking three flights in a day, guess what? 
you your body still is taking a beating so guess what you can help yourself out by going to the joint okay 90 percent of elite athletes including nfl pros they rely on chiropractic care to stay at the top of their game and perform at their best and you don't have to be a pro in the nfl to do this for yourself okay and at the joint you don't need any appointment you can just walk in and get the care that you need same day no scheduling hassles just walk in when it's convenient for you and they keep prices affordable and guess what this is the real kicker as a bucks fan parentheses race fan you can get <laughs> your first visit for just $19. That's less than Andrew Jackson on the bill, okay? Head over to Buccaneers.com. Check out the contest and promotion section under the Fans tab and download this offer right now. Pause this video and do that, okay? It's a great deal for great fans. Head to thejoint.com. Find your nearest Tampa area location. All right, getting to some overarching themes of what Neander had to say. Uh, I've got like four bullet points here, and we also have some listener comments on what they think that Neander should do. Uh, one of those, Wait, yes. Before that, can I do a little preamble before that? Please, yes. I really liked how he mentioned he gave us a little inside peek, which Kevin Cash has already done in previous interviews. Mm -hmm. They knew this from the get-go. He said Chicago and Milwaukee trip that they already knew in April hey, that the team off. vibe was not good. Yeah. And guess something what? As a fan, we saw it too. We felt it. And so that part, I'm really happy. You know, I talk a lot about sports quotes being really just the worst. That's the type of information that I think fans deserve to know that inside scoop of like, yeah, actually guys, like we, we also saw it, you know, we, we, we saw something, not often and it never really got better um and i really appreciate that um furthermore i wish not that they would ever say this but maybe if there was some reporting mechanism to find out who the bad actor or bad actors were that led to things not really being so fun and lively and energetic those first couple weeks of the season and maybe can I say something can i say something without it being shots being fired sure there are people whose jobs are that. So it would be nice for them to share that. <laughs> to uncover that, to uh, procure some reliable sources to uh, release Guess what? Them for public consumption. When hopefully one day, if we ever get to do that, we would. <laughs> we yeah. would. That, I think that's, that's something the fan deserves. Um, and I know that somebody on that side would tell me, well, then you won't ever get any quotes right. if you if you do that. But, you know, I think there's a line where you can mm -hmm. be respectful, where you can just be doing your job without shots fired and still provide the fan who is cons consuming this product the right information. Yeah. Find somebody who's a loud mouth in that organization, whether it's an usher, a food vendor, a general manager, I don't care. Heck, I reported some information, whether people liked it or not, about Wander Franco never again playing in a raised uniform, that Yandi and Randy uh, didn't get along because their wives didn't get along, that Yandi would yell at Wander Franco for arriving late and driving on the interstate over 100 miles an hour in his luxury uh, SUV. So, hey, it, it, it can be done, folks. doesn't take it a can whole be lot done. of work. So just wanted yeah. to throw that out there. No, good point on that. Um, so Neander obviously uh, mentioned the need for more offense. Uh, everybody knows that because this team ranked, it, it just uh, is unsettling to have to read off these numbers. Ranking 29th in runs in OPS, um, 27th in batting average, 28th in homers, and an MLB worst, not surprisingly, 212 with runners in scoring position. He said, quote, we've got to find a way to cash in opportunities with runners on second and third. And that'll come from, I think, a lot of the group we have. Um, he also did, throughout that conference, mention looking at outside opportunities, which we'll get to. But I think what he's banking on is Josh Lowe plays like Josh Lowe. Chris Morrell shows that 
30 homer over 162 game potential. Jonathan Aranda looked really great towards the end of the year, a full year of junior Caminero, healthy Yandi, healthy Brandon Lau. You got some ingredients uh, to make the cake. Yes, I believe there is there there are plenty of ingredients to better that offense just because of underperformances in this year. However, I don't particularly like how he ended that quote, which is and that'll come from I think a lot of the group we have because that tells me and not that I'm expecting five six free agents to come into that clubhouse. I'm not right, but, but that does seem like. It's one thing they're targeting. And I think we know that thing that they're going to be targeting. And maybe that's it. And maybe like an Ahmed Rosario type signing. Somebody that falls through the cracks and you're like, whoa, 1.5 mil? Yeah, we'll take you. Um, plus what you, I think, were going to hit on one of the bullet points. Yes. Um, and, and just to kind of add to Neander's quote here, uh, there are some players out there we're aware of that will be available by trade or by free agency that will likely pursue. I don't want to make any promises that that'll absolutely be done. And I do believe it will be improved internally. Ideally, there's a little bit of both. There is some flexibility with the payroll if we think it's the right player in the right time. Um, also, he mentioned uh, kind of tied in with the offensive boat here. A lot of this is tied in with the offensive boat is they mm -hmm. don't want to waste how good this pitching staff is and could be. Uh, here's a fun stat for you. The Rays posted the major second best ERA after the all-star break. Um, unfortunately, they weren't able to capitalize on that like they should have. And not only that, but everybody, the majority of the pitching staff should be uh, available, healthy, and ready. Pete Fairbanks, Jeffrey Spearings, Shane McClanahan, and then all the guys that contributed this past season. Now, I'm sure there'll be some movement with relievers in the sense of uh, arbitration eligibility and whether you tender, non-tender, drop them. But um, they've got a really, really good group um, to to utilize in 2025. They do. I mean, I, I think there are there should be no race fan who is like, what are we going to do about the pitching, man? Yeah. <laughs> Don't. If you're worried about that, don't. Like, you shouldn't have to go out and sign Rich Hill and Michael Waka no, 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 no. and McHugh and all this. Yeah, we have much bigger fish to fry here. Okay, the 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 pitching I have zero, and I tell you, literally zero doubts that this pitching staff is going to be okay. First, mm -hmm. like we've said multiple times, it's. I'm not gonna say nice. I'm not gonna say good. But something like that silver liney adjective insert here. Yeah. Multiple guys are coming back from Tommy John. So you know that those guys are not going to get Tommy John again. Right. That's kind of a benefit of having that. Um, yeah. It's I, kind of amazing that they put up these numbers without Zach Eflin, without Jason Adam. And then we know how unsuccessful Phil Maton and Aaron Savali were, but they were no names. And, you know, had put up numbers previously, but you're talking about, you know, maybe your best starting pitcher at the time and one of your best relievers, you take them out of the equation and you didn't lose a step on the pitching side of things. Got uh, better. You and Rodriguez and some of these other guys and uh, they were in business. Yeah, no, I, I, I think it would be silly for anybody to point at the pitching as something that needs to be addressed at all. Like, I think, I think the, the starting rotation has a lot of depth um, I feel like we have the opportunity to fend to my guy. And I mean, if Zach uh, Littell, who was this year's best race pitcher starter, um, is deemed by many race fans as like not even a thought in the 2025 rotation, there's no problem there. Um, just a quote from Neander here. You throw that on top of a group that's been one of the best, if not the best pitching staff in baseball the last couple months here. I don't need to do a whole lot of selling on that side. All right. Uh, we have more from Neander, a uh, couple more bullet points, uh, talking about catching, talking about the coaching staff, but mm -hmm. first we have to tell the audience some very important things. Well, I got to tell you that this show is sponsored by booking dot com booking dad yeah yo there explore those u.s cities you always secretly wanted to learn more about they've got hotels bed and breakfasts 
vacation rentals, resorts, and so much more on booking.com. You might just find your perfect stay even in your baseball rival city during the postseason. And guess what? I might not be in the U.S. right now, but you know it that I used booking.com to get my accommodation. So you should do that too. And booking.com delivers exactly the right U.S. stay for you. It can help you book a stay that overlooks the stadium, which is one of the coolest things. If you have never done that, do that. So, again, the right stay can make you a fan of any U.S. city, even your baseball rivals. Use booking.com today. Booking yeah. We also want to tell you about FanDuel. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a B.I.G. big return on FanDuel. That is America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, a few live play by play and so much more on the same page where you place those bets. You'll get started with two hundred dollars in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first five dollar bet. So good. I'll repeat it again. Get started with two hundred dollars in bonus bets guaranteed. When you place your first $5 bet, where's that at? That is FanDuel.com. All right, uh, more on Neander here. Uh, he says and acknowledges that they need some assistance, much assistance behind the plate. Uh, Rays catchers this past season hit a combined 194, 272, 291 line this year with a 563 OPS that ranked third worst in baseball quote. We've got to find a way to be better back there without question. And that'll be a priority in terms of where our mental energy goes throughout this winter. Um, the tea leaves read that Ben Rortvet will be coming back that the Rays are banking on Dominic Keegan to perhaps contribute in 2025 after beginning the season in triple a Durham. And then I guess uh, maybe they can find a, temporary solution like they did with Ahmed Rosario in 2024. Maybe you go out and get a uh, right-handed platoon partner with Rort Vett, like Elias Diaz and Kyle Higashioka. Maybe you keep three catchers on the roster between uh, a Diaz, a Higashioka and uh, a Rort Vett slash Logan Driscoll. But uh, they, they, it, Alex Jackson isn't walking back through that door. So you need something else. Uh, it's kind of crazy that that line, which again, if you guys forgot it, I'm going to repeat it again. The race catchers hit a combined 194, 272 on base, 291 slugging, 563 OPS. You know what's insane about that? That it's not actually the worst. It's actually third worst, like you said. That's insanity. Some fan bases had to see worst Worst offensive production from their catchers. Like that's 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 crazy. I'm gonna guess the White Sox. I'll just guess the White Sox with everything. I'll bad. guess the White Sox too. Yeah. I'll guess the White Sox. Um, but really, yeah, something must be done. And I feel like it's it's good that he is saying this stuff. Like we need to get ahead of it. We and and I'm glad that he's saying the trade route is actually more viable than the free agent catchers. Because I mean, it's Hagashioka, Jansen. Like it's yeah, they're like. Okay, like you, you'd like it, but like you want this to be hopefully stable. Yeah. And I I don't know. I, I, I get think that's why they're banking on Dominic Keegan because he I don't have the quotes in front of me, but he waxed poetic about him and what he did this past season, 285, yeah. nine homers, 806 OPS and double A, and uh he hits the ball as hard as anybody in the organization. Um, so it seems like they're trying to groom him to be the next guy, but they also said that about Renee Pinto. They've said that about a lot of other guys, or if they turn out to be good, they trade them and they have a 10 year career somewhere else. He said someone we're pretty excited about is, uh, Keegan. He hits the ball as hard as anyone in our organization does a lot of things really well and has the intangibles for the position. And okay. historically, or at least within the last decade, you look around the league at catchers that really take hold of that position and they kind of come out of nowhere. They're not usually that famous. And I think he really has a chance to be that type of contributor, but we don't want to put too much on him too soon at the same time. Now, Dominic Keegan, I believe, did not touch AAA last year, or this year, I don't this think season. So. so 
I feel like I know that a lot of race fans want to see the Carson Williams and Dominic Keegan and everybody else that's like yeah. in triple A, double A, uh, Chandler Simpson. I mean, Evan Klosky, shout out. He's saying that right. he sees him uh, in 2025. I feel like those three names are, are if Carson Williams could do that as an August call up Chandler Simpson, no bleeping way. Dominic Keegan. I don't think so either, man. There's, yeah. You can't. How? Why would they? Why would they in, increase the difficulty in, in in their learning curve so harsh when really they don't have to? I guess the one thing is that Keegan is 24, 25 years old and played SEC ball at Vanderbilt. But then again, he didn't start playing catcher exclusively until organized professional baseball. There you go. Which is what so, three years ago. Yeah, he's a 2022. Yeah, so I I feel like those names are going to be thrown around quite a lot. But let's hit the last bullet point because I think yeah, it's the very last important. bullet point uh, to Evan Klosky's dismay and maybe some other people's dismay. The Rays are expected to retain Kevin Cash's entire coaching staff, including Chad Matola, coming back for a ninth season. There's a quote, right, that he talked yeah. about the the coaching uh, staff. So he basically talked about the organization under Stu Sternberg values continuity as long as it's not accompanied by complacency. Quote: If you have the right people going through the frustrating experiences that we went through this year, you can make a lot of them right. You can find a lot of ways to get better. As long as uh, as long as we're learning, we're growing, we're challenging each other, and doing that productively then I want to keep going about it with the group we have to ultimately find a way to win a championship. Two questions with Neander's comments on the coaching staff. He's saying that Stu values continuity as long as there isn't complacency. So my first question to that in a presser would have been, how? what are some ways that you can gauge that, that there isn't complacency? How do you know that this isn't an actual issue um, with, with, with the coaching staff? I would say that talking regularly with Kevin Cash and getting his vibe on how everybody's doing and day-to-day -day basis, getting reports on the coaches and whether they're doing their job and doing it up to par. My second one is that he's talking about instructing by Chad hasn't changed from 2021 to 2022 to 2023 and to 2024. Yeah. Well, if you're a race underscoring, he's basically underscoring underscoring how good the offenses were during his time and he's still doing the same thing uh and this year just happened to be really bad offensively exactly so 21 really good 23 really good 22 really bad 24 really bad so um obviously 24 being the, the worst but my my thing is if you know that this year to year thing the variance is showing very high there's a very high variance going from their offensive production year to year. Mm -hmm. What can be done to mitigate that variance? Because I know that you're saying you're instructing year year the same thing. Well, what are the ways that you are studying what you're doing and why this variance is high and how can you minimize that variance? Because again, this team has really good pitching. They don't need to be bashing the ball like Shohei Otani, Aaron Judge, and Juan Soto are doing every night. They don't need to. They right. can have Detroit Tigers offense and be a really good overall team. Well, I think some of it, it, it's a tough balancing act because I think a lot of it has to do with the Jimmys and the Joes and not the Xs and the Os. So having a continuity with the players and the star power involved definitely helps matters. But even in... Um, it wasn't necessarily this press conference specifically, but in previous comments, they're talking about changing their coaching strategy and practice protocols and drill work. Basically, not just, um, I guess, half-assing it, um, but really in spring training and practices, incentivizing batting practice and situations. Hey, it's uh, third inning in, uh, in March 3rd. Uh, we want this to still be a game like situation and try your hardest and don't just be out there um, doing the motions and, and going home or going to the bar afterwards, like really try to focus 
and put some awareness and some competitive thought into what you're doing. So Which I, I love. I didn't do that previously uh, in every year up till now, or maybe that, that kind of went by the wayside because of, you know, you had a couple more veteran players, but I would think that's something that you need to, to focus on uh, harshly. Well, then there's those ex- look, I love all of those quotes. And yes, you're, you're right. They came from another uh, presser. They came from another interview, but that actually targets the two questions. So number one, why wasn't that being done? Isn't that complacency? Yeah. Isn't that a, a, a part of the complacency? And oh, how do, how you can mitigate that high variance that is shown in the offensive production year after year. Uh, and you're doing the same thing each year, but now on an, on another quote, you're saying, nope, we're going to try to do things differently. So which one is it? Are you trying to do things differently or are you doing things the same year to year, uh, how you're instructing the player? So I, I understand that it's, it was a frustrating year, but the communication has to be, a bit more transparent. It has to be a little bit more aligned because as we have discussed in this episode with actual quotes, and you actually heard Eric Neander's voice on this pod today, uh, we are poking holes. We're seeing some things that are not really matching up. That's why uh, you should have been in the room on Friday instead (laughs) of uh, flying out on Sternberg's behalf. You should have been there (laughs) asking the bulldog questions. Woodward and Bernstein. Don't don't let me in, man, because I, I will. Well, they won't let you in. That's the problem. That's the um, problem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there we go. That's uh, th- th- those are the main uh, focal points of Neander coaching staff returning. They need catching help. They don't want to waste the pitching staff and they need more offense. Uh, a couple listeners also chimed in on Neander's presser. Uh, John, obviously a burner, says, since it doesn't seem like we are really competing, identify one-year deals we can flip at the deadline. Jake Stokes says we need four things. Uh, one, offense. Two, catcher that can hit. Three, shortstop that can hit. Four, anyone who can hit. And then Tampa Bay Sports fan says we need a veteran catcher and two big bats in the middle of the lineup. Uh, I would say that's pretty on par there uh, with what is uh, needed for the team going forward. So, There we go. All right. I hope you all enjoyed the episode and we'll be back tomorrow. In the meantime, thank you all for listening. And we really hope you stay safe if you're in the Tampa Bay area um, amid the hurricane. So make sure you're doing your preparations and do what needs to be done there. Uh, For your second listen, you can find Locked on MLB. Prepare for the Fall Classic with our buddy Soli, who has it all covered every single day. Find Locked on MLB on the YouTubes or wherever you listen to podcasts.